So in this video, I'm going to be talking about spoilers about Volume 14 and the fate of Philip, his ultimate demise and how it leads to his inevitable great fall from the peaks of which he believed that he stood upon. Not that I'm saying he did, just saying that's what he believed he was doing, which was standing on the peaks of epicness because he believed he had a grand plan and vision entailed. So again, if you do not want spoilers, I suggest you click off of the video. So of course, getting into Philip's demise, one thing I do want to talk about is of course in the previous video I did talk about how he perceived Irons, how he believed Irons was not as strong as he believed, and a lot of that was just built on his own ignorance and believing that all of this stuff that was going on with Irons was just one big conspiracy theory that he believed that he didn't really cast this one big spell but in fact it was just Florida using the Death Knight. They did have one and that he believed that they finally got control of it and used that to rake up the kills. So Philip himself is very much one of those that just comes up with a lot of crazy theories and doesn't look into the itty gritty details of what did end up happening out in the Cats of Plains. So you can understand why he thinks the way he does. It doesn't mean you have to agree with his ultimate conclusion of how he saw irons so his fate is pretty well sealed very much in volume 14 he comes up with this whole idea that he is going to attack a particular shipment of grain that of course is going from one location to the other for assistance he believes that if he takes that out it will send a message it will be the big be the beginning of his epic saga to basically allow him to move up in the chain and this is very much of a reoccurring thing when it comes to him that he believes that if he does this he does that and he musters these people behind his magnetic genius then he will somehow rise to all new heights of power and glory and a lot of people that ended up seeing the report of him attacking that grain shipment believed that there was some big master plan behind it. Like, why would someone do something so stupid unless there was this big plan behind it? Albedo, Demi believed that to be the case, but Chaltier was one of the people that came out and said, hey, maybe he's just stupid. And that is something that I did mention in the previous volumes. The reason why I mention it is because of the repercussions that happened afterwards. That very much gave an excuse for now Nazarek Irons to then wage war upon the kingdom, which led to their ultimate demise and destruction. This is the point where Philip basically realizes that he failed. He made some very bad mistakes, so he basically put himself in his mansion and just drank himself into a stupor and refusing to admit that he was the cause of the war, but I think mean, deep down inside he knew it was his fault, but he just did not want to admit it. He was then soon found by Albedo waiting for him in his house or home, seeing her presence. He believed automatically, and again, goes back to his ego, that he was going to be rewarded for giving the Sorcerer Kingdom a reason to start the war with the kingdom itself. Albedo happily gave him a box, a nice little box. Not quite the same box that Rene got though, which he believed rightfully good prize. He was all giddy and excited. He opened it and found that it contained the heads of his fellow barons and those that assisted him on his great conquest against the Sorcerer Kingdom, which you can imagine very quickly threw him in despair and made him realize that, oh, he is not in fact in the good graces. And that is exactly the case. Albedo happily and gleefully disclosed that she did not like him, how little she thought of him. Him. and honestly laughable just how stupid he was at ever thinking that he could raise himself to the heights that he thought he could again the great conquest that he believed he was going to do and lead she honestly just thought was a absolute joke that of course led her to revealing the fact that she was there to punish him for the fact that he wasted precious time and resources when it came to Nazarek and it did lead her to being scolded as well so she felt extra a little bit annoyed at the fact that certain events played out the way they did because of his inevitable decision that he ended up playing. So he very much realized that he was not in a good position. He was being completely belittled, railed to the ground. So he decided to try and make a run for it. Albedo said, please, by all means, go outside. I have another gift for you. And that is where he started to ball up in a little tight ball, started balling his eyes out. And she did not want a bar of soap of it. So she grabbed him by the ears and dragged him 
outside and he could feel the power and the force that she possessed and realize that she is not weak like some people thought she was not some frail innocent woman absolutely furious so she dragged him outside and allowed him to see the fruits of his labor everyone that served him the villagers the people that worked close to him all impaled in spikes because albedo did mention that she was considering letting some of the villagers survive so that they could then execute him but she felt that was ultimately just a boring conclusion to this story so at the end she decided your reward will be torture and it wasn't her suggestion and it wasn't irons either and it wasn't demi's it was in fact philip's dad that came up with the decision of making sure that he suffered for what he did to his family, to his legacy, and his arrogance. And so Albedo made the decision to use him as information gathering on torturing techniques. And so Philip got dragged away to continue to live, but in the most gruesome and horrible way possible of being a test dummy. So as you can clearly tell, Philip did not have a very, very good ending fate. And maybe he is dead finally after all those testing techniques have been done, but I would believe that he would be put to other uses as his father requested to make sure to put him to good use, as his father said. And I'm sure that he did get put to great use after being tortured for all those different techniques and those test dummies. He probably got thrown into a couple of locations to be used as nothing more than food for Nazarick. Of course, again, going back to the previous point that I mentioned about Philip's idiocy, it depends on how you want to look at it. Some people could argue that he's not an idiot. He's just lacked wisdom and was just lazy because he didn't think to go out and double check. But at the same time, some people could argue that is just being an idiot. It all depends on perspective. At the end of the day, in my opinion, everyone's right because we all know Philip is just the grand fool, the, the clown of the show, or in this case, the entire circus because he dragged a lot of people along with him that ended up sharing some pretty horrible fates and that of course was all the fellow barons the villagers etc those that worked close to him all because of some grand conquest that he believed he could achieve because he thought the cats of plains was nothing more than a conspiracy that it was just a singular death knight being controlled by the opposition used to drum up all this overhype so that they could then take over the kingdom that is what philip believed now again He's a fool, he's an idiot, but it, it, it isn't unrealistic as well. You've got to realize that Philip's mindset is actually quite realistic to how some people believe in this day and age. Some people believe the earth is flat. Many of us would sit there and roll our eyes at it. Facts don't matter. People believe what they want to be true, not what to be true. That is a saying that I truly do believe and I've had for a very very long time so again i'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below what do you think of philip i actually personally think he's a really well written character i don't like him if i in the sense of like if i ever met him and i had to talk to him i wouldn't like him i wouldn't enjoy his company i would never be friends with him but as far as a character goes he is very well written and, and i do enjoy reading him and i do enjoy him as a character I just don't enjoy it like again if it, if it was someone that i had to meet so there's a difference between being like hey i like the person in general no but i really enjoy just how fun he is in a writing standpoint because it shows many different types of people in this world that i think the author has definitely been heavily inspired by and the author has mentioned one or twice that some characters in the story are heavily inspired by people that he has met so again love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below but if you like this video hit the like button subscribe for more anime content and i'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video